welcome. And today I'm gonna to be talking about service accommodation. What is service accommodation? How can I find these deals? And what are the potential pitfalls I need to avoid? Service accommodation, in a nutshell, is when you rent something out on a nightly basis. So typical rentals might be per month or for six months or for years, but service accommodation is night by night lets, short term lets, like hotels, Airbnb, Booking.com, all these sorts of places where you would go to rent a room or a house, but for one night or two nights or for a short period of time. Now, realistically, this is not property investing, this is hospitality. This is about looking after people and hence they're called guests, not tenants. So when you're providing this sort of accommodation, as well as obviously providing the place that they go to, like you would with a tenant, you also have to provide other bills, like you would with an HMO. But you also have to provide cleaning and linen and check-in and check-out services and a customer service team. So when people go to stay at your apartment or your house, that there is someone basically looking after them the whole time. It's not quite the same level as a hotel where you might have cooking facilities and you've got a reception desk and all the rest of it, but it's getting there. And service accommodation kind of falls in the bottom end of the hotel industry. So if you're looking to go into hotels, service accommodation is a really good place to start if you want to get used to that night by night hospitality style investment. Now, a lot of people talk about rent to SA. What is rent to SA? Well, effectively what you do is you will rent an apartment or a house off a landlord and you might pay them a thousand pound a month and then you're going to rent it out every night for a hundred pound a night. Now, if we say there's 30 nights in a month, that's three thousand pound a month that you're making from that property. Take off your thousand pound you're paying the landlord, take off your other fees, and you can see there that there's a profit margin to be made for you. Now, the beauty of this is you never own this apartment, you never get, have to buy it, I'm gonna put a deposit down. But you can make instant cash flow really, really easily. And to be honest, service accommodation kind of works anywhere. Like you can get guests to stay in pretty much any apartment anywhere in the country, but you have to consider how much you're paying to the landlord and what else you're competing against. So I could put an apartment in the middle of the Peak District and I would get some people to stay there, but would I get enough to make a profit? This is the business side of it. So when you're looking at Rent to SA, you really, really, really need to make sure that you know how your numbers stack up and you know the market is good because ultimately, this is a business, this is an investment, it's gonna make you money. And Rent to SA is the highest risk strategy out of all the strategies that you're likely to hear about. The reason being is that you can very, very quickly take on a business that has to turn over a really high amount of money to make any profit. I've got some apartments in Reading and I know that we have to turn over 20,000 pounds a month just to break even. Now that's a quarter of a million pound business and that doesn't make any profit. That, that just breaks even if you, if you turn over 20,000. So think about when you're going into this, if I don't have any sales, I've got 20,000 pound a month of outgoings that I've got to cover. Not only that, I've got to find a guest every single night. A tenant, I'm gonna find once every six months at the minimum, and often they'll just recur and they'll keep going and going and going, and they might stay there for five, 10 years. So when you're thinking about Rent to SA, just think about the risk side as well as the reward. Because a lot of people overlook it and they see Rent to SA just instant cash flow, get out a job, a grand a month, thank you very much. And it can be all of those things. It is a fantastic strategy and it is awesome at getting you out of your current job or getting you passive income using very little or none of your own money getting into it. Your typical rent to SA, if you're going to buy a deal, it's going to be around about £3,000 for a sourcing fee. But if you find it yourself, you need to furnish it. You've got a few utility setup costs and you've probably got some light painting and decorating and then some linen and some furniture. Like It's not a lot of money. Typically, you're talking between five and £10,000. I personally would be putting more than £10,000 into one of these deals. And you should be cash flowing a bare minimum of £500 a month. So they are quite easy to get into. You don't need to have good credit. You don't need to have a deposit behind you. You don't need to get a mortgage. All you have to do is pass referencing checks. Now, referencing is kind of like the process of going for a mortgage, but it's what you do when you're renting. So what happens is they'll just ask you some basic questions about you and about the company that's gonna be taking it on. And how it works is you meet all those criteria and you get the place. If you don't, you don't. But it's not massively difficult to pass referencing and the absolute worst case is you either go for a director's guarantee against the company or you pay six months rent up front. Pay six months rent up front, yeah, you're gonna put more money in, but at the same time, your overall profit over the course of three years is not gonna change because you're still gonna to have to pay that rent, but normally you pay it every month rather than all up front. So your first six months, you're gonna make a lot more profit. So there's the main two ways you can get around referencing. The third way is you can just joint venture with somebody you can pass. And if you joint venture with somebody you can pass referencing, then you're onto a winner. But Rent to SA is a fantastic strategy, but can carry a lot of risk. Now, people often ask me, what if I'm going to buy an apartment, say in the center of Birmingham, and then rent it out night by night in service accommodation? And I would say, look, there's nothing wrong with buying a property to do service accommodation in. 
but it is really, really, really risky because if you're buying something, the plan is you, normally you're not going to sell it or you're going to have it for a while, otherwise you would rent it. And if you're going to have it for a while, I would want to be putting my money into an asset that I know is going to pay me for a long amount of time. You see, service accommodation at the moment is completely unregulated. The only regulation in this country is the 90-day rule in London that says you can't rent out a unit for more than 90 days in a given period on short-term lets. That doesn't apply in the rest of the country, but that is the only regulation there is. There's nothing about fire safety, there's nothing about like hygiene and health and safety and the rest of it, but hotels have a lot, a lot, a lot of regulation, a lot of red tape, a lot of compliance. In the next few years, it's expected that we're gonna get a lot of compliance through. Now, if you're gonna buy an apartment, you don't know what that compliance could be. Like with HMOs, your rooms have to be the set size. And you've gotta put fire doors and things in like that. Well, if you've got to do that on service accommodation, you're gonna buy this property two years later, you don't even know if you could rent that apartment out. It might not be compliant anymore. And then you're sat with an asset, which you could rent out on a single let, but the likelihood is your returns will be really low. So when you're going into these sorts of deals, just bear in mind the future. If you're buying something, if you're renting it, then you need to be worried about the next three years, what's gonna happen there, because you can end the contract at the end of your three years. Personally, I would not be buying for service accommodation. I would only, only do rent to SA. If I'm gonna buy something with service accommodation, I'm gonna buy hotels and guest houses. But that is a completely different video and a whole different kettle of fish. Rule of thumb, don't buy for SA unless your backup strategy is an HMO or a single let that's gonna make you a lot of money and make the very least 20% return on investment. That's my personal opinion. Some people may disagree with that, but honestly, when you don't know where compliance is going, you don't be buying an asset, you don't know what you can do within three years time. The pros of service combination. Now, service combination is awesome for cash flow. We love cash flow. Someone once said that cash is king. I disagree. I think cash flow is king. And if you've got money coming in every single month, even if it's 500 pounds or a thousand pound a month, it makes a huge difference to the way you can run your business and ultimately the way you can run your life. Because most people will budget on a month to month basis and getting cash flow coming in from an apartment is awesome. The second thing, as I already said, is you put very little money in at the start. You're talking 5,000 pounds or some of these apartments. My good friend, Anthony Wilmar, I'm pretty certain he paid like two and a half grand for one of his. That's all he put in. He literally just painted one wall. I think he changed the bed sheets and the whole place is already furnished. And he put no deposit in, no first month's rent up front. You know, so there are things you can do to really get that cost down. You shouldn't have to put thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds up front. The third thing that's awesome about Red to SA is it's a really high end apartment. And for branding, if you're stud in an apartment that's really high end, you're going, hey, look, this is my apartment. If you want to come stay in it, blah, 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 blah. It looks nice. It carries more weight than if you're outside a single let that you bought in the middle of a robber room for 40,000 pounds. It looks nicer. And although this, you shouldn't really care about vanity, this world kind of runs on it. So it's good for your brand, the apartments and the places that you're at are really high end. The fourth thing I like about service accommodation is you can systemize it. You can make this thing completely passive. And all your guests have to check in and out every single night and you haven't got to have it cleaned every day and you've got to top up the coffee and the tea. Like you haven't got to do any of that. You can get other people to sort it all out. You can systemize rent to service accommodation really, really easily. And look, if you guys want to learn more about service accommodation, I highly recommend going to speaking to a guy called Ricky Mandel. You can find him on Facebook. You can find him through all the Samuel Lee's channels. He's an absolute genius when it comes to service accommodation. And he's a really good guy. So I'd go chat with him if you're looking to get into service accommodation. He's who I go to if I have questions. What are the cons behind service accommodation? Well, I've already mentioned it's risky. Your turnover is high and your profit margin might not be that big, but your profits can be big. You have to make sure your deal stacks and at the very least will break even at 50% occupancy. The second thing I'd say is if you don't systemize it, it is a massive headache. There's a lot that you need to do with service accommodation. Unless you've got the right people in place at the right times, then it can be a lot of work. But if you do get the right people in, then it's a dream. Service accommodation is one of these awesome or horrendous scenarios. There's not much in the middle ground. So just bear that in mind when you're going into it and make sure you get the right people involved and make sure you get the right training as to how to do this properly. What are some of the pitfalls? How are you going to market it? Because putting it on Airbnb, putting it on booking.com is great, but there's a lot of other places on Airbnb and booking.com. Why is yours different? Why is yours better? You know, there's two buildings in Manchester in Salford Keys. And if you go to them, you'll see literally hundreds and hundreds of lock boxes outside that all service accommodation. Some of our investors have some units in that block and they are doing really, really well. They're the penthouse suites, the, the most expensive ones, but they're making more money than anybody else there. Why is that? because we dress them better than every other one, because they look better than every other one. They're marketed better than every other one. When you go on booking.com and you see the apartment, you can see the same ones in the same block. You might not know they're in the same block, you might do, 
The point is, it looks better. And yes, it costs us an extra grand to get it there, but there's a reason for that. As makes phenomenal money, and a lot of the others I happen to know are not doing very well. How you dress your apartment and how you market it is absolutely everything. So get somebody involved who knows about interior design, that knows how to make your apartment look nice. It's gotta be plush, it's gotta be high end. It doesn't have to cost a lot, but it's gotta be high end. So the pitfalls are around how you market it and who you use to manage it. Because if your managers are not good and they can't dress it and market it well either, that's when you're gonna have problems. So get the right people in place, get the right training and market your properties really well. My best advice is when you go to take one on, clear up three weeks. You need to take that property from where it is, the minute you sign it, to online as fast as humanly possible because that first month, you're not gonna make any money. Because you haven't got it online, you've got no bookings coming in, but you're paying for stuff. When you go to take one on, clear up three weeks, drop everything you're doing, and spend three weeks at the apartment making it happen. Stay in it for a few nights if you can. And then you'll learn, oh, the shower doesn't quite work. Little things, oh, the door needs to give it a little bit of sh a shoulder to it. You can write all this, but you can fix it more importantly as well. So you know what the kind of things the guests are gonna come with because you've stayed there and then get your teams in place, get it all marketed sweetly, and you're gonna make a lot of money. How do you find rent to service combination properties? That is a great question. Now, I have two ways of doing this. One, pay someone to do it. it, is the easiest, most painless way of doing it, pay somebody else to do it, pay 3,000 pounds. The way you do it is you ring up letting agents, you ring up vendors, you send emails, you send letters on Gumtree, you do all of this, and you're probably gonna get 100 no's before you get a yes. That's about the going rate. If you make 100 phone calls, you might get one. You might get lucky on your first phone call. That's possible. But the likelihood is that's really not going to happen. I know if I went to sit down and get a rent to SA deal for next week's list, what I would do is sit on the phone for like two days straight and just ring, 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 ring agents backwards and backwards and backwards until I've actually eventually done it and someone says yes. There are scripts and there are words and phrases you can use to help go along with it. Don't mention Airbnb. Don't mention service accommodation, things like that and talk about company lets and, and ask for high-end apartments. You can do all of that, but you're still gonna have a lot of hassle and a lot of headache getting them. Be prepared to take a no. Now, for someone like me, like, I'm quite busy, so for me to sit down and spend two days on the phone to, make, to sell a three grand deal, that doesn't make much sense to me because I can make more money doing a different type of deal. So from a business perspective, it's not something I wanna be doing. At the same time, if you are looking to sell rent to SA deals, they sell really, really, really well because people want them because they're so hard to get hold of. Actually, there's a third way of finding rent to SA deals, which is the best way of doing it and it would be the way that I would do it. And that is you go direct to developers. So when people build like a, a new build block of flats, say in the center of Birmingham, the center of London, the center of Manchester, wherever it might be, you contact the developer, you get in with the developer and say, look, this is what I want to do. There's no agency involved, you're speaking direct to the person who's writing the head lease, you're speaking direct to the person who's selling the units, direct to the person who can say yes or no. And you're saying, look, this is what I want to do. I want to rent this apartment out night by night. I want to make money on it. And this is how it's going to happen. I'm going to guarantee your rent for three years. I want a few apartments. Can I take them on? How does that sound? And when you're speaking to the developer, he'll get it. Because for him, what he wants is guaranteed yields for his people who are buying the flats off plan. So if you're going into developers, that's the way to do it. That is the way to do it. If you want to get a lot of SA units with the highest quality apartments in the best areas. That's the best way of doing it, but you've got to get in with direct with developers that way. You've got to build your network. It can take a little bit longer. Otherwise, pick the phone up, speak to some agents, and keep going until you get a yes. One of my favorite areas for service accommodation at the moment, someone asked me this the other day, and I thought that's a really good question. Personally, I like Norwich, I like Bath, I like Bristol, and I like the South Coast. The occupancy rates are good. There's not too much competition. So if you can get something on the South Coast, it's gonna work. And the final thing is management. Like, how do you manage these? Well, how do you find managers? Now, I've got some friends in the service accommodation industry, which I usually go to and say, look, I'm taking on an apartment in this area. I'm taking this on here. Who would you recommend to market it? Because different areas, I've got different managers that would recommend it and different managers from different things. Now I've built my management network from learning about the hotel industry and about the guest house industry because you'll have managers that have come from the hotels and guest houses and they're coming down because they can see the need for quality managers in the service accommodation industry. So they're coming down into this industry because they can see the money and they know it's easy money because there's so many people who need a manager. So best bet is to start networking in those arenas. Start spending your time on people doing service accommodation regularly. Maybe you know somebody who's already got a unit. Ask them, would they take on yours? And you say, look, can you market mine as well? And I'll give you 10% of the rent. So they effectively become a manager for you, but you do it together as a joint venture. You can do things like that as well. Get creative with it, but learn to network in these industries. Learn to network in the marketplaces. I know quite a few people, if you message out on Facebook, you'll get a lot of people respond to you and they'll give you recommendations. So it's beginning to build your network within property, not just for investors, not just for deal sources, 
But for, for management companies and for brokers and solicitors and accountants, you need a whole arsenal of people where you can go, look, I need this. Who do you know that can help me out with it? And you can put this out to people. And you know, I've had brokers come to me with different management companies I can use in different areas and different accountants and solicitors I can use because they all know each other. So network, 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 build your network and you'll be able to find the managers you need, you'll find the cleaners you need. And that is how you can get it systemized down to a T. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, if you've learned something, please drop a like, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have anything you would like me to cover in a future video, please drop in the comments, please drop me a message and say, look, please do a video on this and I'll make sure I do one for you. Take care, have a wonderful day.